Well, good evening and welcome. I can't see too many more people hammering at the door to get in. So let's launch into tonight's presentation. Um, I'm Darren Palmer from the Tasman District Council Communications team and welcome to our Motueka Town Catchment Information Webinar. Um, just a bit of housekeeping uh, before we kick off. Um, tonight, the chat function of this webinar won't be monitored. So if you've got any questions, please use the Q&A function on the taskbar at the bottom of your screen there. Type them into there. And at the end of the presentation, we'll collate them and we will be able to answer your questions. Um, remember the point of the session today is to provide an overview of the draft Motueka Town Catchment Plan and to answer any questions you may have before you make a submission. Uh, we have a comprehensive and highly interactive overview of the plan on our website, which we'll be using for tonight's presentation. However, hard copies of the draft plan are also available from our service centre in Motueka. Our lead presenter today is our stormwater planning advisor, Emma McFarlane. And uh, alongside her, we have a few experts who will be able to answer questions at the end of the presentation should they uh, get technical. We've got Robert Workman on the side, along with uh, Walter Waterman. But anyway, let's, uh, without further ado, please uh, sit back, enjoy your popcorn, and uh, I'll pass it over to you, Emma. Thank you very much. Thank you, Darren. Kia ora koutou. Toitu te whenua, toitu te moana, toitu marae, anā tangata. Healthy as the land, healthy as the sea, healthy as the place of man. And welcome to the Motueka Town Catchment Management Plan. Before I go any further, I'd just like to acknowledge Mana Whenua for partnering with us to develop this plan. The goal of the plan is to combine stormwater, environmental, social, cultural information together and provide long-term direction for the management of stormwater within the Motueka urban area. I'd like to know that the plan does not cover the greater Motueka River catchment or other communities like Rewaka or Brooklyn. So the plan is a digital story map format, and this is best viewed on a computer or tablet. We've used this format because it means we can have interactive maps, images, and links to other relevant resources on the internet. So there are tabs along the top, which have the main themes of the CMP, as well as sub tabs. On each tab, you can scroll down for more information, as well as zooming in and out on the maps that are on the right. This format has been used for the Richmond CMP, and we plan to use it for the others. So we'd like to get your feedback on this format. The catchment management plan focuses on five long-term stormwater aspirations that were set as part of the urban stormwater strategy. This was adopted by council in 2019. For each of these aspirations, council has determined a 10 and 30 year target. And from these, a set of improvement actions to help us achieve these aspirations. Our progress will be tracked with a monitoring plan and the CMP will be reviewed and adjusted in six years time. So now I'll just briefly take you through the separate tabs that we have in the plan. So the first tab, Te Mana o Te Wai, explains the principles that we need to give effect to in accordance to the national policy statement for freshwater management. So there's a video here on the right that explains these principles quite well. And I encourage you to all to take time to watch this video. So I won't go into further detail for this, um, but the next tab we've got is the catchment overview. And so this tab explains the Motueka catchment and its characteristics such as rainfall, soils, and groundwater. The urban area of Motueka is low lying and on flat terrain with minimal gradient from west to east. On this map, you can clearly see that the hills in the background the flat river and coastal plains and the swamp lands that Motueka was developed on. So there's a lot more information on this tab that you can find as you scroll down with the maps loading on the right. Um, there's also kind of sub tabs at the top with the history, sub catchments and stormwater assets. So before we get into the different aspirations, I just want to jump to the last tab here, which is integration. So our aspiration for this is to manage stormwater in a holistic, efficient and cost effective manner. A lot of the issues that we're facing are interrelated and these need to be looked at holistically rather than in isolation. For example, there are different effects from stormwater on our wastewater networks and water supplies that we need to consider together. Transport also has an effect on stormwater as well, both from a quality and quantity point of view. So this is just a summary and there's many more interrelated challenges and it's like quite a lot to consider. The key message here is that in order to manage stormwater and other council services efficiently and cost effectively, we need to take an integrated approach. So now jump into our aspirations. The first one being our urban streams, aquatic habitat, 
habitats and coastal environments are healthy and accessible. So we have on each of these aspirations on our right, the targets, and this diagram shows the medium to long-term targets. Uh, the, the key issues that we have for the Mortuweka catchment, we have a, uh, um, Freshwater scientist has done a habitat assessment for Woodland Creek and Thorpe Creek, and this provides an indication of the state of natural condition of the waterway and how healthy it is. Both these creeks are man-made or highly modified and they score quite low. However, they still have an ecological value and there's an opportunity to improve these. Improvement actions that we've included in the plan include encourage and support community initiatives to improve stream health, work with landowners to plant and fence these streams, protect Inanga sporing, spawning sites and optimise how we operate the floodgates and how these have an effect on the natural tidal cycles. So the next aspiration is that our stormwater discharges do not degrade water quality and ecosystem health of our streams and estuaries. There are several main roads, large car parks and commercial areas in Motueka. And runoff from these sites pick up contaminants and degrade the water quality and ecosystem health of streams and estuaries. Additionally, wastewater overflows are partially caused by inflow from stormwater during large storm events and present a contamination and health risk. Improvement actions for this aspiration include retrofitting stormwater treatment on the main roads and large car parks, education and develop awareness about the impact and management for stormwater, especially from commercial and industrial sites, and investigate ways to reduce inflow of stormwater into the wastewater network. Moving on to our next aspiration, stormwater flooding does not create a hazard to our community or cause damage to properties. Mortuika is flat and low lying, which means, sorry, um, which means it's challenging to convey and discharge stormwater to the sea. Because of this, we are limited to what we can achieve using traditional underground stormwater infrastructure, which relies on gravity, such as pipes, sumps, and manholes. These pipe solutions are expected to become even less effective with sea level rise. It's also important to understand that Mortuika faces flood risks from different sources, that being coastal inundation, river flooding, stormwater flooding, and groundwater. These flood events can happen in isolation, but also in combination with each other. Solving one flood issue doesn't necessarily reduce the flood risk to the catchment as a whole. The flood risk is also expected to increase in the future due to climate change, either with sea level rise or increased rainwater. And again, this could occur in a combination. So in terms of current development in our existing network, rainfall runoff is now directed into underground network of pipes. These networks do not have the same capacity as the natural waterways in low-lying areas that would naturally flood and now filled with buildings. So this map shows a historic aerial with the current day aerial. And as you can see, areas have been built up. So now moving on to the 10% AEP flood map. This shows a rainfall extent that has a 10% chance of occurring in any year, also known as the 10 year event. You can see that flooding is scattered through the town in many different isolated locations, but it also shows that flooding is contained, generally contained on the roads. And some roads in Mortuweka are designed to do exactly this. They act as a detention or overland flow paths and they flood until the pipes have capacity again to drain the water towards the coast. The more extreme flood map shows flood extent from an event that has a 1% chance of occurring or a one in 100 event. You can see that flooding is a lot more widespread and no longer is just contained to the roads. Generally flooding is caused by these overland flow paths which drain from the west towards the coast. Roads such as High Street can act as a barrier to these flows and as a result, ponding behind the road embankment. There are some areas that are affected by a combination of stormwater and high tide, and this will impact, will increase due to sea level rise. Additionally, there are localized low areas which also experience flooding issues, issues during large rain events. The floodgates at Wharf Road are very important to ensure that stormwater can discharge during high tides and the floodgates are relatively resilient to sea level rise and remain effective well into the future. So in terms of improvement actions, large and costly in interventions would be needed to address flooding at a catchment scale from extreme storm events. 
these types of events have a 1% chance of occurring in any year. Required solutions are either technically difficult or impractical to implement in an existing urban environment. Based on the number of properties that would benefit and the cost per property for these solutions comes out significantly higher than the average property value in Motueka, which makes these solutions not very cost effective. Furthermore, some of the investigated solutions are not future proof considering climate change, life cycle costs and high risk of failure when needed. But it's not all bad news, even though there may not be cost effective and future proof solutions to address flooding from extreme events, there are other interventions that will make a difference to the community during flooding from more frequent events. Improvements such as road sump upgrades, soap pits and improvements to overland flow paths. Council will also further investigate opportunities for pipe upgrades to reduce nuisance flooding in combination with addressing wastewater overflows. And another really important action is to optimise how the floodgates operate. So moving on to our next aspiration, which is development, we en enable water sensitive growth for future gen generations. So we have a video from Niwa loading here that explains the issues that may arise from development really well. It also talks about how this can be done in a better, more water sensitive way. New development provides the opportunity to build a resilient and water sensitive township that enhances the natural environment and reframes our stormwater key issues into one of opportunity. So in summary, I'd like to circle back to where we started and emphasize the need to look at all these issues in a holistic cost effective way. Council will always look to address multiple issues in combination where possible. So thank you for listening for that overview of the plan and I'll pass it back to Darren to see if we've got any questions. Thanks very much, Emma. I lost control of my mouse for a minute there and that was a, a <laughs> bit of a problem. Yes, look, we have had one question um, and I'm not sure who could face this. Maybe Walter can uh, help us out with this. And the, and the question is, is there any contact between the upper aquifer and stormwater soakage? Uh, what's known in, in that area? Uh, yes, Darren. Yeah, I think I can answer that. Yes, yes, there is uh, contact between uh, the upper aquifer and, and stormwater. So stormwater naturally infiltrates into the ground. So um, and and uh, feeds the aquifer, so to speak. Um, so that's something that we need to consider also in terms of um, contamination risks. So there's another uh, one of those um, interactions between stormwater and and other. Um, uh, water services, for for example, water supply, uh, uh, a lot of people in, in Motueka get from uh, the aquifer. Okay, thanks. There's a yeah, there's another big question. Thanks, Julian. Um, are there plans to incrementally move Motueka further inland? I mean, how far can we go up the valley to, to get away from the, the to the lower the plains? I mean, is, is is that a viable option? Yeah, look, really interesting question. Of course, there are no plans to move. Uh, Motueka uh, inland uh, at the moment. What we need to do as a council is is um, think about uh, the effects of climate change and sea level rise and how we respond to that in the in the future. But it's a bit too far to say that um, yeah we, we we were able to move an entire town at this stage. Yeah, it's an extremely large ask. It's a, it's a big ask. Look, we haven't had any further um, questions, so I'll wrap things up a, a bit here i'll just um you guys thanks very much uh, emma and uh, walter and on the side robert workman and i saw david stevenson popping up there to assist with any questions should we have them um the the key thing is is for people attending tonight is to have your voice heard uh please make a submission you make it online uh, it is available on our website and have a look through the story map of it so it's a fascinating integrated and detailed uh, presentation that uh, you could spend a lot of time in there and there's, there's a lot of good information in it remembering the deadline for submissions is four o'clock on friday march 4th so there's not a lot of time um, you can make it online as i said or the traditional way of making your submissions on on um, paper anyway that's it from me darren palmer from the tasman district council communications team emma mcfarlane robert workman walter walkman and david stevenson thank you very much and um good evening <laughs>